Welcome to worship with us at First Lutheran Church. You're going to be seeing this recording on Sunday, September 27th. Today is actually Wednesday, September 23rd. It's a beautiful fall day. We passed the uh, autumnal uh, equinox and we're into fall now. And as you can see, the colors are changing. It's a beautiful world that we live in. Um, Maybe beautiful, except for the COVID-19. This is the 28th Sunday that we've been doing our online worship services. I'm standing outside here uh, on Elmwood Avenue. The curb and gutter has been poured since last week, and I talked to a contractor, and they told me that by the end of next week, the pavement will be put in here. The bicycle path will be right in here. And as you can see, the laborers are putting in the sidewalk, the approach, and they're even accommodating people that are blind with that pad so that blind people can feel that there's a crossing there and that they're about to come to a street. It's great to have you with worship here with us for worship. You're going to hear a little bit of a word of welcome from, from some folks, and then we'll be, we will be going in. So thank you again for being with us. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship, worship at First Church. Church. Hi, I'm Byron Jusik, our daughter, Heather Holland, Levi Holland, Kelly Grayson, Kelly Grayson. Let's, Let's get, get this service on the road. <laughs> Hi everyone from Tataguchi State Park. Welcome to worship at First Lutheran. Everybody. <laughs> Ooh. He's saying welcome to First Lutheran Church. Welcome. It's good to have you. We're inside here now at First Lutheran. I don't have my mask on because there's no one here. We're in the midst of this COVID-19, and I encourage all of you to be very, very careful in all that you do. Thank you for joining us for our worship here. It's good to have you here. Thank you to those folks who gave a warm word of welcome as we joined us, as we joined together. And if you have not done yet that yet, I would encourage you to do that. Go to the Sign Up Genius. You can do that from our website. Actually, there's a link to it. I think uh, Renee has that posted here. So that we get to see you welcoming us to worship or sharing a word of peace at the end of the service. Uh, a number of you have responded to the reopening survey. That is still posted at our website. Uh, sign up, uh, or I should say, check in there and, and take that survey. We appreciate your responses to that. For the time being, we do not yet have our preparedness plan approved. And until such time as that is approved, then council makes a, 
a motion to reopen. We will not be having any activities or worship here in the building. A couple of things in our worship this morning. We have uh, our stewardship campaign. It's underway now. In the last day or two, you should have received a letter from me regarding stewardship and our activities that will take place on Sunday, October 11th. There was an estimate of giving card. We encourage you to come to the church here on Sunday, October 11th to drop off your estimate of giving card and receive uh, a special little package. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed by that. We do ask you to RSVP to let us know if you are planning to come so that we can prepare accordingly. We now have a, a message from Carl Hemmig. Carl is the chair of our stewardship team. He's going to be sharing with us about the upcoming stewardship campaign. Hi everyone. Happy fall again. We don't get to see each other in person as much as usual lately. Obviously some things have changed since last year with COVID-19, but other things haven't, which means it's time for us to talk about stewardship again. What is so important about stewardship that we bring it up the same time every year, pandemic or not? Simply put, the congregation needs to plan for next year. We need to help it evolve to meet the needs of our members and community and protect what we've already built. In other words, we need to hold on to the things that really mean something, like the message of God's grace through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Don't you think the world needs that message more than ever? We are responsible for spreading that message through our own actions and compassion. We need our church to be strong in order to do that on a bigger level. It's nice to have a building, a home for all the things we do, like worship and education, and all the various activities and meetings that our church lives will eventually return to. Lighting and heating help keep the building comfortable, too. It's necessary to pay staff to help everything run smoothly. I'm excited that Allie Anderson has recently become our Children, Youth, and Families Coordinator and that she's busy helping out with our Gig and Good News Hour programs. This is a very important part of our stewardship, passing on Christianity to the next generation. This happens through music, through education, through mission programs, and so much more. You've seen and heard firsthand the results that your giving can have on the leaders of tomorrow. Step back and think about your life five years ago. Where were you spiritually? What moved you? Since then, you've grown, right? I want you to think about what First Lutheran has done to build up your faith experience. Now think about what it's done for your friends, your children, or your grandchildren. Think about what you can do to help this continue. Money helps. Time helps. Talent helps. In the last few days, you should have gotten a letter from Pastor Carl talking about his outlook on stewardship. You should have also gotten a commitment card from First Lutheran asking you to pledge what you can to help the church. Prayerfully consider what you can give and bring the card to the church parking lot on October 11th. There should also be an RSVP card for that day's Pick Up the Pork event. Pick it out if you will be there, or fill it out rather if you'll be there, so that we can know how much pork to have ready for you. We have offered online giving for several years, but this year, you can get started more easily than ever before. Just go to our congregation website, www.firstlutheranlesseur.org, and click Online Giving near the top of the webpage. You can do one-time gifts, as well as weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, and semi-monthly planned gifts. Whatever fits with your life, online, living, or sorry, online giving can help you and the church budget more easily. I'll also put in my annual shameless plug for the Time and Talent Survey. Please go to our website or pick up a paper copy from the church office. Let us know what it is that you can do to help the congregation. I would like to close with a simple request, that you give what you can. Think about what you can do to advance First Lutheran Church's mission to receive, discover, and proclaim God's word. Think about how much the programs here mean to you and how much this church does for you and for the world around us. Hopefully we'll see you October 11th at the Pick Up the Pork event. Thank you. Three-year-olds and our third graders. So I'm going to get started with that. But first of all, I want to just offer a prayer. Let's all bow our heads. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful fall day. We thank you that we can come together to learn about you and your love for us in this good news hour. We thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ. We ask for your 
your strength and give us patience as we deal with this COVID-19. Help us to make the, the small adjustments we need to. And God, today we pray for people who have challenges a lot greater than ours, the people that are way out west where the forest fires are burning that causes the smoke in the air here, the people that are recovering from floods. and We thank you for the wind that blows in our midst. <laughs> Be with us now as we uh, celebrate giving Bibles to our three-year-olds and third graders and as we start our Good News Hour. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. A little louder. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm going to ask the parents and the three-year-olds to come up here to the front row. It, do we just have one? Actually, Liam, we're gonna have Liam come up because he didn't get a Bible when he was three, and we're gonna give him one now. Parents, and this goes for you uh, third grade parents too, we'll get to you in a minute. When your child was baptized, by the altar, by the baptismal font, whether it was here or somewhere else, in the Lutheran tradition, the pastor asks the parents and the sponsors to make some promises. And one of those promises is that we say, um, as your child grows, we ask you to place in your hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for them for their instruction in the Christian faith. Now, I am really pleased that we partner with you in that. We don't just say, okay, put the Bible in their hands and teach them. And that's really a large part of the role of the church is we get to help you with that. And so today we're giving Bibles to our three-year-olds and third graders. And even though Liam's no longer in, no longer three years old, he's getting his Bible. So Allie, if you would take the Bibles and give them to them. And the, right here, Liam and Cain are getting what's called the Spark. Actually, they got the wrong Bible. Now we'll have to just, we'll put it on the bottom shelf and we'll sanitize it later, okay? What they are getting is called the World Study Bible, or Story Bible, I'm sorry. It does not have the whole Bible in it. It has some of the main stories, the stories of creation, the stories of the flood, the stories of the Ten Commandments, and maybe most importantly, the stories of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection for us. So enjoy those Bibles, read them, look at the pictures. Liam and Cain, ask lots of questions. Ask your mom or your dad, and if they don't know the answer, have them call Allie, because Allie knows everything. Well, almost everything. And if Allie doesn't know, she can ask me. <laughs> so, now I invite the third graders to come forward. That's the, the gray one for the third graders. Don't come up too close, just stay right in there, okay? Well, we got wind today. Now, the third graders, and I gotta, let's see. Xander, are you here? Xander's not here today. Um, Liam is here. Liam, raise your hand. It's hard for me to... Oh, he's over there already. Yep, that's right. Baylor? Oh, I'm on the wrong list. Everett. Everett's right here. Leroy, right there. Finn, is Finley here? No. Olivia? Reese, oh, you know what? The Bibles are supposed to go to the parents, but that's okay. Uh, because the parents promised to put them in their children's hands. But Allie's new at this. Reese, where's Reese? Reese is right here. And Waylon, Waylon Tiki? Wesley, I'm sorry, I got the wrong name. I get you guys tangled up. <laughs> and last, Vance. Is Vance here? Okay, did I call everyone's name? All right, the Bible you guys have is called the Collaborate Bible. It's the Bible that you will use 
In three years, when you start confirmation, we, we call confirmation gig here. It means growing in God's grace. It has all the words of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New, and it's got a bunch of helpers, uh, helps in it. It kind of answers some questions and explains some things that for us sometimes are hard to understand. So third graders, you have received the best selling book in the world. I looked up this morning to see how long it's been the best selling book and I couldn't find the answer. But they said it for at least the last 50 years it has been, and I'll bet for the last 200, probably 500 years it has been. And it did say that in the last 50 years, 3.9 billion copies have been printed and sold, or maybe not sold, but distributed. So you have the best-selling book in the world. Take good care of it. Parents who have a sticker, and this goes for three-year-olds too, and Heather will get you the sticker for your boys's. It'll say presented to on September 20th. And parents, I hope you've written a little note in there, uh, some kind of a message of, of care and um, of, of communicating how important this book is for your son or daughter. So let us pray now over these Bibles. Gracious God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for these young people who are now receiving their very own copy. Bless them and bless them the words of these uh, scriptures as they come to their heart and as they guide their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, sustains us and all creation, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth of God's proclamation. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, 
You know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And this morning we begin with uh, the process of hearing our young people who will be confirmed as they share their faith statements with us. Good morning. My name is Braylon Hoffman. I am a ninth grader at Lee Sewer Henderson High School, and I am a part of the 2020 confirmation class here at First, First Lutheran. Outside of school, I play hockey and baseball, and as I get older, I realize God is always keeping me safe while I do all the things I love to do. I'd like to start by thanking my mom, Darcy Hoffman, and my dad, Derek Hoffman. Also, my mentor, Margaret Moore, or as I call her, Muffy. Muffy was my daycare from the time I was born until kindergarten. She still comes to my games and supports me to this day, so thank you for being my mentor. I would like to thank my gig guides, Derek Hoffman and Billy Schultz. They, they did an amazing job making gig fun every week. When I first started gig, I didn't think it was going to be fun, but I was way wrong. The best part of gig was when we would visit out in the community, rick, raking leaves for the Johnsons, delivering goodies to the elderly, Christmas caroling, and making in-home visits and having small conversations. Gig taught me that God will always be with you anywhere. It also taught me that it only takes 10 to 15 minutes out of your day to make someone happy. When I started gig, I thought only adults went to church and you had to pray to talk to God. But after three years of gig, I learned anyone, no matter what age, can talk to God. You don't even have to pray if you believe God is always with you. The Bible verse I pick is Philippians 4-13. I can do all things through, through him who strengthens me. That to me is saying I can do anything if I remember he is always with me, helping me in tough or challenging times, and that anything is possible with the power of Christ. Even with COVID-19 and church being virtual, I realize you don't have to, you don't just need to be in church to talk to God because he will always be with you throughout tough times and good times. Thank you, Pastor Carl, for, for everything you taught me. I'm looking forward to learn more as I continue to grow in the church. Good morning. I am Martin Gregerson, and today I'll be talking about my faith journey. These past few years of gig have taught me so much about God and how he works through me. One time I felt as if God was working through me was when we did feed my starving children. That was by far my most favorite thing we did during gig. I really liked the feeling of helping people and knowing I had made a difference in someone else's life. I will definitely miss meeting with my gig group and other gig students every Wednesday. After a long day, it was always nice to go meet with my group and talk about highs and lows and how our weeks are going so far. I would like to thank my gig guides, Amy Gilbranson and Marcia Sullivan, for not only teaching me about God and all the amazing things that he does for me, but also giving great advice and help whenever me or the girls in my group needed it. I would like to also thank Sarah Novak and Pastor Carl for teaching me something new every Wednesday and for always answering any questions I had about God. The Bible verse that I chose is Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I chose this Bible verse because I think that loving yourself is very important because God loves you just the way he made you, so I believe that you should love yourself just as much as he loves you. Even though gig this year was cut short because of the coronavirus, I was still able to grow my faith in God and learn new things every day. My faith in God has grown so much in the last three years, and I have learned so much that I'll keep with me for the rest of my journey. Thank you. Michelle Sampson will be sharing with us the first reading from the writings of the prophet Ezekiel. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4 and 25 to 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away for, from their righteousness and commit inequity, they shall die for it. 
For the inequity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn away from your transgressions. Otherwise, inequity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michelle. And now, Marnie Dunning will share with us from the writings of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians. The second reading is from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. And beginning at verse 23. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. And they said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you, one question. If you tell me the answer, I will also tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, We are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. And so they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. And then Jesus told them a parable. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and he said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second and said the same. same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. And Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, 
the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the king of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of our Lord. Well, as you can see, we're in the community garden here in Lesur. If you were with us back in April or May, I did a message for you here in this very same garden. At that time, it had been freshly tilled. Some plants were placed into the soil. Some seeds had been sown. People had come here with some very, very good intentions. And some of them received great reward fruit for their labor. But you can also see there are plenty of weeds in some of the gardens, some that did not get the care and the attention that the gardener intended. I think this is a good example for what Jesus is talking about in our text for today. I'm going to sit at the table now and share a few more thoughts with you on this text. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. There is a saying that I saw on a poster many, many years ago, and the saying was this. The smallest good deed is greater than the grandest good intention. And the picture that went along with that saying had a photo of a little girl giving a flower to an elderly woman. I got a flower here I picked in the, uh, in the garden behind me. Actually, there's a honeybee here trying to pollinate it. Good luck, honeybee. I'm glad we have the pollinators. Anyway, I'd like to speak to you today about good intentions. An intention is something that you plan to do. Something that you plan to say, a goal that you hope to achieve. And I think it's probably fair to say that most all of us have good intentions as we start a new day, as we start a new job, as we go on a journey, as we start a new relationship, whatever the case may be. But the reality is that most of us fail to follow through completely on all of our good intentions. Somehow they just don't get done exactly the way that we hope or plan. I had good intentions. You've probably heard that statement. You've probably said it yourself. How many times has that response been what has been received when there's been a broken commitment, a failed opportunity, or a missed goal? There are times when we have every intention of doing what is right and good and forthright, what is expected, what we ought to do. And yet, despite our best intentions, we've dropped the ball, we've disappointed ourselves, and probably disappointed others, and maybe even hurt or caused pain for another person. We Lutherans are pretty good at meeting these failures with a word of grace. And we remind ourselves that God's desire is always to give us a, a fresh new start, to wipe the slate clean, to, to take our, our sin away and to make us clean again, to make us as white as snow. There is healing power in that, and that is an amazing thing, that God freely forgives us, that God invites us to confess our sin, to repent, to change our ways, and, and then God gives us a new opportunity to start again. And we must not forget that Christ does send us out into the vineyard. We have a beautiful text today in which Jesus talks 
uh, about the vineyard. If you notice, he started the text in kind of a challenging situation with some of the authorities, the religious authorities that were asking him about what authority it was by which he baptized John the Baptist. And they weren't sure how to answer that question, where that, that authority came from God or from human beings. And so they said, we don't know. And then Jesus tells us this wonderful parable about the father who has two sons who he asks to go and work in the vineyard. They have good intentions to go. At least one of them does. But in the end, he doesn't go. And the interesting thing is the other one says he won't go. But then he does go. It's an interesting story. Both of them continue to be sons. Both of them belong to the same family. Both of them, I suspect, will be invited back into the workplace again next week, and we don't know what their response is the next week. But the question that Jesus asks of these religious authorities who come and challenge him about what authority he has done this baptism, Jesus asks them the question, which of the two did the will of his father? Ultimately, I think we would say that only one of them really did the will of the father. And that, surprisingly, was the one who said he wouldn't do it, but he did. Our text today talks about baptism. And by what authority does baptism take place? I had the privilege of doing two baptisms over the course of the summer. We're into fall now. Fall began this last Tuesday. Two baptisms of little infants. In holy baptism, God promises to be with us throughout our life's journey. I have the privilege of putting water over the head of that child three times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then I mark them with the sign of the cross on the brow. And I say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. In holy baptism, God promises to stay with us throughout our life journey. God promises that we'll always have a forgiving, uh, we'll, we'll always have forgiveness and grace. We'll always have the renewing power of the gospel. And yet with the claim that comes to us in baptism, there's a call to faithfulness. And that means living a life of working in the vineyard, working at God's kingdom, living a life as a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ, living a life continuing in the covenant God made with us in baptism. I've been working with a group of eight young people here at First Lutheran Church. They're preparing their faith statements. You'll actually hear one or two of them today in our service. We don't know yet when they will be confirmed because of COVID-19. We're not able to do it in the sanctuary, at least not to set a sperm a certain date yet. But when they are confirmed, and it will happen for these eight young people, I promise them that, and I promise you that. There's a question that I ask them normally as they stand in front of the congregation. And the question is this. I ask you, do you intend do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To, the hear, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of Christ in word and deed? To serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus? And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? And the confirmants always respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. They make that promise. You know, it's interesting. I've never yet have a, had a student say, well, no, I don't think I can do that. Or I've never had one say, you know, I intend to, intend to do that, but I'm not going to follow through. They all make that statement that they intend to. And the reality is they all, have all failed. And I have failed too. We all fail to be the kind of faithful people that God calls us to be. Fortunately, God forgives us. God wipes us late clean and sends us out. 
But I think as we consider this pledge, this promise that we make, whether it's when we welcome new members into the church through the sacrament of holy baptism, or whether it's when our young people affirm their faith in the rite of confirmation, maybe that'd be a good time to ask ourselves the question that Jesus asks these religious leaders in our text for today when he says, which of the two did the will of his father? Which of the two did the will of his father? Our God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, reminds us in our text for today of the faithfulness that is expected from each and every one of us. Which one of us will do the will of the Father? Which of us will acknowledge our sinfulness and ask God for the chance to begin again? Which of us will see to it that our light so shines before others that they may see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven? Which of us will be disciples of Jesus? These are the questions that Jesus lays before the chief priests, the elders, the authorities in the church of his day, the same ones who opposed him in the temple during that last week of his life. These are questions that Jesus lays, us, lays before us as well today. How will we respond? As people of faith, let us now confess together our beliefs according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of grace and love, we thank you for our First Lutheran Church faith community. We pray for all those who call this their church home. Today we pray especially for these church members, David and Sidney Okanowski and children Rylan and Roosevelt, Bruce and Carol Olness, 
Chad and Sue Olness and their children Blake and Keeley, Marlis Olson, Steve and Sally Olson, and Nicole and Jeremy Otto. Be with them, keep them safe, and guide them with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son took in all the bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O oh God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations towards life where our ways are unfair. Give us new hearts and new spirits where sin permeates our cultures and institutions. Change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. We give thanks for the life and leadership of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Comfort her family in their grief and guide the process for filling the empty seat that exists due to her death. We pray for all of our elected leaders and those seeking office in this election year. Grant them civility and mutual respect as they campaign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O oh God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in the body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially today for Bonnie Keach as she recovers from surgery, and Mark Zire as he continues his recuperation from a debilitating stroke. Be with those suffering from COVID-19 and comfort the families of the 200,000 whose lives the virus has claimed. Defend the lives and welfare of the children who are abused or neglected, hungry, or exploited, bullied, or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests towards the interest of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our own community, our members who are homebound or living in long care facilities. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. I sincerely thank you for your offerings that you have given to support our ministry here at First Lutheran Church. If you have not sent something, you can send it in the mail. Put it in the mailbox outside. It's locked. It's secure. Or you may do it online as well. And we thank you for your prayers. Let us now pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us now pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing. Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.
Go now in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always and share that peace with the others with whom you are sharing a space right now. Share that peace that we have in our Lord Jesus. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Worship in God's Glorious Outdoors. It's great to have you with us at First Lutheran this morning. Okay. Peace be with you. Have a great week.